Hey, thanks for tuning in to my official YouTube channel for my official YouTube videos to actually be uploaded. So, um, make sure to like and subscribe to my official YouTube channel. That's for me. So, go to my website, www.susanyubing.com. And as I do this thing called giving credit where credit is due, because that's important for credibility as far as trustworthiness to be capable to actually believe in um, humanity because of common sense. That's something that possibly might not have been taken into consideration, especially in reference to a few situations. So go to my website, www.susanyulane.com. If you have the reference of pop culture, which those who know, I don't really have many pop culture references. Only recently have I found certain things out, and that doesn't uh, sit well with me regarding a few factors. It's a personal opinion because I actually give credit where credit's due, partially because I know about copyright laws as well as intellectual property laws. And so unlike something such as Hamlet or other Shakespearean plays, there are legalities in reference newer written items, such as uh, copyrights that are filed within, if I remember correctly, it's within a 50 to 75 year uh, minimum. Otherwise, you have to get permission directly from because of those legalities. Otherwise, you are susceptible to punishment because of copyright and intellectual property rights that you don't want to infringe upon. So, I don't know how many people have ever thought about looking into copyright laws, but that is an importance. So, for one example, uh, back in the day when I had not known about certain things, such as uh, the Uniform Fetish Ball, swing big band version of the star spangled banner i didn't know that there was anything in that capacity because i personally purchased the song on my ipod it's what i did and so i had performed to the big band version of the star spangled banner well there were Changes made to the Uniform Fetish Model because of the legalities. I had heard that through the grapevine. And so in that particular reference, I had made sure to do what I could in those regards of respecting intellectual property rights. And so later, in another year, of uh, Toy Story regarding that particular uh, performance. And so then there's the COVID situation. After getting back to the state of Texas, mm -hmm, and a few other situations where obviously I didn't ever give permission for anything regarding my personal thoughts, but whether the fact or fiction based I, I made sure of that because common sense would have to actually go through me to get my permission to make sure I actually approve of it. So I actually 
they have to approve of it before it can actually be done because of the legality in regards to copyrights and um, intellectual property rights. It's a common sense. So if you go to my website, www.susannewing.com, you're capable to go and read my journal blog or the PDFs I made and those updates from those particular points in time. So, in regards of pop culture, in the city of Austin, Texas, there are a bunch of signs. I don't know how many people have driven in the area, but one particular sign that is in several locations is literally South Park. Multiple locations throughout Austin, and uh, different areas, it's the South Park Mall, South Park Shopping Center, so on and so forth. There's a, there's a few references, and so in the year of 2016, I authored the first book of an entire series called Failsafe. And there is this irony. So, for anybody who's heard of South Park, and I don't mean in Austin or wherever else, uh, in South Park, the TV show, though there is some irony in reference to Austin, uh, is specifically in regards of this one episode. So, in this episode, this female. If I remember the part before, there's something that happens where Eric Cartman takes a female out of the area and she gets off of social media. And people don't know what has happened. And everybody just kind of pretends in some way. Well, in another episode, who I call E equals MC Square, which is an irony because apparently he's in Austin now, which is a really big irony with the South Park thing. Um, he has this company in the show also called SpaceX, and he's talking about going to Mars, <laughs> which possibly he was talking about back then, though he had been brought forward in that regard. to fix all this stuff. She's just this little ball of sunshine that has whatever it needs to have to get to the sun. E equals MC squared. <laughs> and at the same time, Eric Cartman in this episode is wanting to get away from South Park because of some stuff he did online. And there's funny because between Austin and San Marcos is this area on I-35 actually called Trace. And if you take just the T from Texas and then Trace, although if you refer to Excalibur Fair, <clears throat> the year is 2005, which is an irony because the episode season is 25. And so, in that particular reference of the uh, troll train, well, there is that situation regarding 2005. Doesn't mean they removed those two zeros. You have two mixed bags. And um, there were these situations I dealt with with the one and only Renaissance Fair that I had ever been to, um, where, you know, these people who were dressed up jumped out of trees with weapons in their hands and had just purchased a physical version of these fairy wings. And in between these two tents were these 
you know, group of four or five males jumped out of the trees with their weapons. I was ready to fight. Because, you know, <laughs> sure I didn't graduate from basic training. That night, I did grow up going to the five boroughs in New York City as well as Pittsburgh and Philadelphia after having been born and raised in New Jersey. So, you know, uh, there are those who understand that in the 1980s and 1990s. So, you know, four or five males dropping out of trees with weapons, and it was just a right. <laughs> What did you say about my wings? Oh. You ready? And so... <laughs> of assault. And when you kind of correlate these situations together of St. Patrick's Day and an irony because how did I wind up in Washington State? I'm sure there's a way to trace that back. You know, with all of those merger situations going on. Hypothetically. And so, you know, then there's the factor that the female and male are wearing these yellow shirts. And <laughs> those who know Lady Doryville, mm -hmm. and the female is wearing the t-shirt that says Aries. And the male is wearing a t-shirt that says the Beast. Which is an irony when you think about Here's the kicker about that. It premiered in the month of November in the year 2016. I had already published Failsafe the Kennedy Curse Views with Science Fiction Fantasy, as well as a few other books. Mm -hmm. By that point in time. And, um, you know. If he were to do this, this would be absolutely hilarious because I knew him in scuba diving and I don't know if there were others who had been informed that we were in the same class for that, for the same thing. And so in the lifestyle, what is supposed to be the consenting adult lifestyle to be more specific, um, I had this situation with the storage unit and Patrick happened to have taken, without my permission, all of my stuff. I had made an attempt to do a second claim after what occurred in regards to the U-Haul situation, which is an irony regarding the St. Patrick's Day episode of South Park. And it is as 
it is, because it's just an irony. Now, Matt did not know about Patrick. More importantly, though, most likely, Patrick didn't know where I met Matt. He probably assumed it was on MetLife, which would be funny as all sorts of funniness, mainly because regards of because of our National Geographic Open Water Scuba Diving course together and a few others, such as navigation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we took a few classes together. And unlike some people, when I was in scuba diving, I was focused on the work. I wasn't focused on getting into a relationship that wasn't even a thought process because I had work to do. And the irony of ironies, I don't know whether or not even because of scuba diving masks, which is an irony regarding COVID, um, but in a reverse sort of way, uh, unless he had clear signs to his scuba dive mask, most likely he would have seen what I handled to make sure that it was a safe scuba dive. Probably not, although <laughs> if he thought he saw something, maybe he didn't. Anyway, it was as it was. Maybe there's a lore in reference to the Ocarina Hollow Games. Supposedly, there was a little piggy that would go swimming. And supposedly, some females would dress up as merpeople or mermaids or whatever um, in that particular reference. And, you know, <laughs> he was capable to surface a leg safely, and so was everybody else during that class. So that's all that matters. You know, hypothetically, as far as that's all that matters. And so, it's known in regards of my scuba diving at the Vandenbergs, and it would be an irony if at International Scuba there was, you know, oh, we're going to do this secret council because we have to protect the sanctity of civilian recreational scuba diving while being hypocritical about actual safety. Because why would anybody ever want to know scuba diving in a safe capacity? And so the irony, Matt would be in a third reference, the individual I wrote about that I had brought back from the dead. Having driven from San Antonio to the DFW area and back. I discussed it with a few people in that particular regard. And for those who know, there are certain um, military aspects where, you know, <laughs> and certain things. <laughs> and so the trifecta irony about St. Patrick's Day. I wouldn't be surprised if Patrick didn't know until much later that not only did I save Matt's life, but I knew him in scuba diving, and since Matt was as he was, most likely he didn't say anything until later. Which then additionally, taking in consideration the civilian recreational scuba divers, and knowing those who understand certain types of military guys, they don't necessarily not talk about certain things, but they don't necessarily talk about certain things unless, one, there's a reason to, which usually is a debriefing. Two, um, well, they not in this particular situation and feeling comfort to do so for that clarification. But you know, enough time has passed from that initial point in time. And three usually has to do with eh, the possibility of an adjustment. Because you know, why wouldn't something like that that would have been reported by the Coast Guard that they had picked up on those radio calls 
the ocean. So there's the keel of where the Vandenberg is. That is the floor where the keel is for the Vandenberg. And then there's the bottom of the ocean. So the terminology for some would be it's a trench area. And so in this trench, I took pictures of not the Vandenberg, which is funny. If you know another pop culture reference, you will never come out me. So there's this show called Dinosaurs, and I loved this show. <laughs> I did. The, the, um, the little baby dinosaur kind of was my favorite. <laughs> dinosaur because it was just funny and so not the Vandenberg. <laughs> not the Vandenberg. Not the Vandenberg. Not the Vandenberg. Not the Vandenberg. Vandenberg. <laughs> and so, you know, there's those pictures and stuff like that. And, you know, um, the, the Vandenberg, well, I don't know. And then what's actually down there? Surprise! <laughs> Not the Vandenberg, except if you go a little deeper, maybe. No, no. I, I, I went to a few locations, and so, you know, my type of scuba diving is a bit different. I kind of have a background in the Atlantic area of the ocean, and I had this phone call that had told me about them taking the Vandenberg and having grown up going out to the Atlantic. Well, I, I had this uh, I had this swift kick to go take care of things because I was highly concerned because I knew certain things, and in my childhood and in my teenage years. Similarly to after having woken up from a coma after my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000 from basic training, a bunch of people in Tracing, Texas, uh, or Texas, had similar responses regarding certain factors as before my head injury. In a different capacity, of course. So as a child, when I made attempts to explain to people what I had seen in the ocean, as well as, you know, my backyard, and then not just San Antonio, because that's after my head injury. I'm talking before my head injury regarding the house I grew up in, in New Jersey. It's not there anymore, that Cape Cod style house. There's another house there. It was apparently an issue. Don't know what happened. I was told there was still a Maybe, who knows? And so, um, I, I guess I could make a joke about technology. Possibly, I don't know. <laughs> you know, temper tantrums. <clears throat> and so, in preference to Clear Spring Scuba Park in the year 2019, having stopped by again, go to my website www.susandeeling.com and read the Ornery PSA, my journal blog. So, you know, it was one of those, well, let me verify things. Let me make sure, because anybody with humanity would have actually spoken with me in truth. In the civilian sector, especially, specifically, because I don't expect in the military, because let's be honest regarding certain factors, I don't expect in the military for them to kind of jump on that regarding compassion. The irony is they want compassion in the civilian sector, and yet you have this prime example where how I wound up off of a military escalation. 
where was the compassion? Being pregnant with two children while having a subarachnoid hemorrhage in the frontal lobe of my brain, which took another six and a half years before it fully dissipated out from the view of the MRI and CAT scans. Where's the compassion in this brilliant sight? Um, you know, those, those simple things. Uh, then, you know, um, in regards of my biological mother, biological father, biological sister, if they were waiting for me to remember their birthday, but didn't ever think to actually do anything for my birthday, because why would they? They would just approve what I dealt with before my anniversary on Palm Sunday in 2000, which would reprove what I explained to people throughout the state of Texas through 2000 through 2012. It's what I dealt with in my childhood, in my teens. I don't know where the compassion is in regards to humanity in any of those references. Maybe I'm missing the science, though actions do sometimes speak just as loud as words. Sometimes actions speak louder than words. And so in those references, obviously, actions louder than those words. Of my more recent journal blogs, on my website, www.ccbrain.com, maybe that remnants of is what really echoes your story to the hills because of those common sense factors. Because where was compassion? Where was humanity? In the correct capacity. So then fast forward in regards of August 2009, while being a single mom of two children in an elementary school whose biological father had died less than two years before the Vandenberg scuba dive that I did. But common sense, where is compassion? Where is humanity? those references, and especially with as many civilians, you know, all those liberals that talk about their feelings and their right to their freedom of expression because of their feelings. I'm a biological female. I'm half Chinese, have five different Native American tribes in my bloodstream. I have a whole bunch of minorities, which would be in my ethnic background, on top of being a pansexual. But yet, I vote Republican. You would think that individuals in that left-leaning side would not about the election portion if they genuinely meant what they say regarding those actors. You know, because it's the truth. Only if you genuinely meant it would it actually matter. Actions speak louder than words sometimes. And so then there's the factors of my scuba diving, where nobody asked me. If they asked me about my scuba diving, they didn't ever ask me what occurred in the ocean. That would require common sense, possibly. Unless they assumed, which how do you spell assume? And what are you not supposed to do when you assume? So unless they assumed that I was just going to discuss it, or unless they assumed that I just said everything that there was to know, or unless they assumed that all the stuff on the surface was the only thing that occurred, you know, in that superficial way, in comparison to having that common sense to actually ask. And so, excuse me on that. Uh, so in that reference, common sense would dictate if you have it. That if you want
wanted to know and if I needed to actually explain because that would require actually officially or at the very minimum of having etiquette and respect to actually ask me. Using verbal words when having a discussion in person, face to face in person. Mm -hmm. I know, I had authored this note on Pepe's and all these people had an issue with me bringing up the definition of etiquette. You know, in the same area where they thought that they were the smartest in the universe. Mm -hmm. Before Irving in 2011. And so if all of these people who claimed to be the most intelligent in the universe were asking on behalf of someone else and they didn't tell the truth, what's that pattern? Because by omission, when speaking with, is a reality of breaking the Ten Commandments of Thou Shalt Not Lie. It's a known fact. So if you choose by omission, on purpose, as a conscious choice, obviously, that would break the Ten Commandments. So in those references, you know, <laughs> irony of South Park nearby, Austin, you know, where there's the smartest people in the universe as they claim. Um, there's these situations that occur. So where is that compassion? Because it was known what my daughter, my son, and I were dealing with. Where would that actual compassion be? I mean, I have compassion. There is the proof. I am referring towards my son, my daughter, and I regarding where is that compassion. So my biological mother, biological father, and biological sister had blamed me for my head injury. They had said that if I didn't join the army, the drill sergeant wouldn't have thrown me into the middle part of the box. Which is true, it is. Logically, yes, it is. That doesn't change the fact, though, that a drill sergeant picked me up as a 17-year-old while yelling at me, shaking me, and threw me into the metal part of the box repeatedly to the point where there is actually a dent in my skull. Where is the compassion for anyone towards me that I knew, you know, back then, in person, face to face, in person, or even now, in truth, because that bio-mission part, that's not compassion. That's breaking the Ten Commandments. And so, you know, especially if there is a actual, in regards to the state of Texas, where there's a length of time where there's multiple in-person, face-to-face, in-person meetings, whether in San Antonio or DFW or Austin. It's just reality. So then, you know, these People, I don't know if I can call them that because of the reality. Because I guess I can call them people because human beings have humanity. So I can just call them people instead. So that way it's, it distinguishes between humanity, which would be in human beings, compared to people. So these people I once knew in person, face to face in person. That new 
knew about the after effects from my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000. These people, not human beings, because human beings have humanity. These people knew about the subarachnoid hemorrhage in the front of the my brain. That took eight and a half years to fix. These people, again, human beings have humanity. Um, they knew that I deal with headaches on a daily basis, but they couldn't see it. Migraines on a semi-weekly basis. They couldn't see the actual physical pain because these people couldn't pay attention to common sense. So these people, again, human beings have humanity. Um, so these people who knew that I had memory deficits and cognitive disorders decided that they wanted to do tests in comparison of being human beings and having humanity because these people didn't have access to my military records. But this civilian sector of people knew that I had gone from college algebra with trigonometry and calculus to second grade math. And those people who complained about how repetitive I have been, well, a human being or somebody who has humanity would be capable to have common sense and realize that instead of complaining about how repetitive that I had been, as these people complained that I sounded like a broken record, well, those people, if they had humanity and common sense while being human beings in comparison to people, they would recognize, I would guesstimate that probably would be the combination of my memory deficits and cognitive disorders. But those people had their opinions as in comparison to human beings who would have that humanity. Obvious. Because those people who were so proud to vote for Cody Thor, Barack Obama, to become president of the United States of America, those people who brought up him being the first black president and my terminology, African-American president, but whatever, those people had continued to compare my hair and my skin to why those people could not understand how I could vote as a Republican in comparison to how those people had been because someone who cares about humanity and that would require paying attention to policy in comparison to what people would pay attention to only in the superficial way of what's on the surface. Pun intended regarding that scuba diving fact. And so in different areas of the state of Texas, there were all these people who instead ever taking into consideration my background because of whoever those people had spoken with and whatever those people had chosen to believe in comparison to the truth and facts. So those people in those references had made the choices that they made in comparison to being human beings and having humanity because those people only were paying attention to the superficial aspects. So in that hypothetical, of course. So Matt, who had been in the National Geographic Open Water School, with me 
well as navigation and a few other courses. She didn't know that I had landed at the bottom of the ocean until 2012. Now, he may have been informed, but not informed that it was me. Until after we had been dating. Now, instead of just speaking with me in truth, because that's humanity, his response was, I wish I knew. After looking at your profile. What did that have to do with the price of tea in China? He didn't say anything any further. At that point in time. Which is an irony. In reference to that South Park episode. With E equals MC squared. And a handicapped car. Being connected. Because there is that fact of him having been in the Navy from what he said. And so he would know what a boat looks at. Especially one that was used in the Navy branch of the Armed Forces of the United States of America. And while I'm sure similar to the 2019 situation where Richard Thomas, isn't it irony of doubting Thomas, uh, had brought up the title situation. I am fairly certain when I was in the water as a child and a teenager, I don't remember any point in time when I was handling business where anything that I was dealing with ever asked me if I had a scuba diver I'm fairly certain I cannot remember a single time. Not only that, I don't remember any point in time if they asked me if I was a scuba dive instructor. You know what else? Uh, when I earned my National Geographic Open Water Scuba Diving Certification that weekend, I don't remember any of those beings asking me if I was a scuba dive instructor or a scuba diver to begin with. With each and every one of my scuba diving certifications that I earn in the waters within the state of Texas, I just don't remember any of those beings asking me if I was a scuba diver or a scuba dive instructor. I just can't remember that. I, I'll be honest though, I don't think that has to do with uh, the after effects from my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000. I'm fairly certain that probably has nothing to do with that. Though, you know what, hold on, I'm, I'm going to be dramatic, just so you know. I'm going to think about in the year of 2003, 2004, and 2011, when I went out to the Gulf of Mexico at Corpus Christi. Okay, so I'm being, just so you know, I'm being dramatic. And so... I can't remember one time when I was out there of any of the beings in that reference ever asking me if I was a scuba diver or a scuba dive instructor. Okay, now that I'm done being dramatic, okay. <laughs> I have to let you know in this lecture because there have been people who have claimed that I've been over dramatic about things when I've explained things and I've informed them that if I was actually being dramatic, I'd let them know. Because I know better because of the after effects from my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000. I don't like misleading people. I don't believe that that's an ethical or moral thing to do. So, <clears throat> in that reference, um, all those scuba diving certifications, so there were 23 of 23. 23 of 26 scuba diving certifications I earned. I cannot remember in any of those time frames of any of my scuba diving certifications that I earned in the waters in the state of Texas or any of my scuba dives in the state of Texas. I cannot remember one time where any of the beings that I handled and dealt with ever asked me if I was a scuba diver or a scuba dive instructor. Additionally, when I went out to Cozumel and 
earned two more scuba diving certifications. I cannot remember that googly eye octopi that was not cameling when he was hiding or trying to hide behind a coral reef. <laughs> Which those who know how big coral reefs can get, he did not camo at all. It was this huge eyeball <laughs> for this one octopi or whatever, maybe a squid, I don't know. But he tried to camo. He tried to blend in to the coral reef and his eyeball gave him away. <laughs> capability to camo whatsoever so like it would be kind of like okay can you see me you can most likely watching this video that's about how camo that octopi had bit or squid or whatever yeah that's that's how camo but not <laughs> and you know what i don't remember him asking or her, I don't want to assume, I don't want to gender assign the octopi squid thing. Um, <laughs> I don't remember that asking me if I was a scuba diver or a scuba dive instructor when I told him, no, don't do that. Additionally, in that same time frame, I don't remember that poofy fish that that scuba diver caught. I don't remember that poofy fish asking me. <laughs> Imagine that. Additionally, when out from Boca, <laughs> when I found lobster and bisque, I don't remember them asking me if I was a scuba diver or a scuba dive instructor. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm going to have to have a different talk with some of these species in the ocean if that is the way people think that. those forming underwater volcanoes asking me if I was a scuba diver or a scuba dive instructor. I just can't remember that. And then additionally, all these species of fish on top of the other stuff of what I was handling, I don't remember them ever asking me if I was a scuba diver or a scuba dive instructor. I was just taking care of stuff. And then at the Vantifer, and then also in the trench area, I cannot remember if any of that stuff ever asked me if I was a scuba diver or a scuba dive instructor. That kind of was not a question for some reason. I guess it's something that people do. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe that's something civilian recreational scuba divers do. I don't know, um, that's whatever it is, that's on them. Um, I, I just, I just don't have that recollection. I apologize. Maybe that's something I forgot, but you know what else? When I earned that 26 scuba diving certification um, out in Florida, in Florida because of the cavern, I do not remember any of the caverns asking me if I had been a scuba dive instructor, just didn't happen when I was out at the kingdom area. I wasn't asked if I was a scuba diver or scuba dive instructor. Just wasn't a thing that happened. So, I don't know. I guess something, I don't know what's wrong with those civilian recreational scuba divers. Similarly to military guys in those references, whether most likely Marine Corps and Navy compared to Coasties, because I did, you know, grow up going to the Atlantic area of the ocean, so Coasties know that particular strength that would be required for, you know, that type of swimming. Anyway, um, you know, I, I don't know. I don't remember. And you know what else? When I was assisting to instruct a class on rescue scuba diving, and that whole help, 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 and that was changed to pizza. So anytime saying pizza or referring to pizza, the request for that, um, I don't remember if I was asked before or after that class by those civilian recreational scuba divers, including the individual that I had been in that reference.
steps to that search and recovery class um, or safety rescue, whatever it was. Um, I don't remember that guy asking me if I was a scuba dive instructor. Nor do I remember the individual who came up to Patty Stewart and I asking me if I was a scuba dive instructor. I don't remember that. I know Patty Stewart would know that I She had asked for my assistance to instruct that particular course. So, you know, maybe by proxy that would make me a certified scuba dive instructor because of that. I don't know. By then, I had earned something like 15 or 16 scuba diving certifications, which included by then my first aid CPR as well. which I was informed that going through the National Geographic Open Water Scuba Dive Certification course in comparison to the open water, if I was going in the instructor route, that would be a specialty included. So I was already one step ahead. So I guess technically would that mean I have 27 scuba diving certifications? I'll leave it as one and others can decide. So. But there is an irony regarding that help, help, help situation because if you look at a map regarding where Clear Springs Scuba Dive Scuba Park is, there's a graveyard not too far off. And so for those who know about my Medal of Honor art project, how irony because then obviously you would know about Old Senate Presbyterian Church and how the church on the hill was utilized war and General George Washington's private office out back uh -huh. and the Battle of Mammoth off to you know around 10 11 o'clock mm -hmm. yeah so that'd be you know what it is but there's nobody who ever asked me in the water if I was a scuba dive instructor just didn't come up I did. <laughs> I did when I descended and went scuba diving and I ascended. I came up. Yeah, yeah. Also, there's a shadow of a picture behind the Vandenberg or whatever the name of the boat is where the American flag is. And that shadow, well, that's Bobo. And he came up. <laughs> he also got put back down. He was told. I have to go to make sure that he didn't use that Vandenberg as a toy boat. Because, you know, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes you just have to deal with certain things and take care of things. So it was as it was. And so there were all these situations, you know, whether before 2019 or after. take in consideration those South Park episodes, it would be irony if Matt had not told either side until later and then had asked. So if anybody's seen uh, the recent Great Gut Health show and there's Cat Temp and a guy who kind of looks like Matt Black. Um, and the Twitter you whatever and I thought you whatever are you doing whatever oh what are you doing sort of thing in some ways I could almost see that regarding a few different situations at maturity level though because you gotta have maturity and some different kinds of other things in comparison to doing that when it comes to other situations instead that does require maturity to not really focus that much on that and actually focus on what's actually important. You know, like for example, my journal blog, The Ornery PSA, on my website, www.susanmeeling.com, is this trip as far as my Medal of Honor art project in the year of 2018, and 
Humanity requires human beings. So there's also those Austin 2020 rallies. Humanity, you know, especially having known about Fort Sam Houston and Brook Army Medical Center, which is now at San Antonio Medical Center. And two separate situations, one in 2008 and one in 2012. That would require humanity in comparison to people. Because just because I am Second Amendment friendly, you know, there is that common sense regarding the modern day book and what I dealt with. But that requires people to actually believe in me and that I can tell the truth in comparison to, you know, people. Because I told the truth. I discussed a bunch of those factors when in Washington State. You know, such as a picture in the Idaho Arco area with this little, I don't know, tic-tac-shaped sort of thing in broad daylight. I could hear it. And then um, this little green orb out in Montana. <laughs> I could hear it. Uh-huh. So it's a different type of radar, I guess, or it's audible or whatever in those references or whatever, you know, importance that would be. I mean, you know, I mean, there's just Irving in 2011, a few times. And then Indiana in 1999. There were a few situations in 2021 and 2022, uh, but that is what it is. Uh, but, you know, how important is that, realistically? You know, so anyway, in that South Park, which is an irony, again, fail safe, the Kennedy curse beats the thing, which you can't see. I had authored and published, or I should say finished authoring and publishing the first book earlier in the year of 2016 before that episode premiered in November of 2016. Regarding the troll trace and that situation of the female character having not been on social media because of the character Eric Cartman who had taken her away from the group that she knew in those particular references and then that whole uh, situation regarding a red haired female who's married to a male who looks for certain types of females on a hunt sort of way in comparison to actually earning uh, in the understanding from the description of that episode regarding E equals MC square Elon Musk and the SpaceX thing. Not E equals MC square himself. No, 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 no. One of the characters from South Park where the male who's married to a red-headed, long-haired female is on, you know, the hunt for a certain type in comparison and, you know, almost Temple of Flesh-ish in some ways, uh, but that's not technically an author as far as that South Park stuff. So, but there is the irony because Patrick was in the DFW area. The U-Haul situation was in Austin, uh, but the uh, storage unit, that was in the Irving area regarding that, which would be a different situation, which I had contacted my insurance company at the time. And they had said I couldn't do a second claim, even though I had the proof that he had admitted it on that life, and it was a huge mess as far as I was concerned, because what is humanity? I don't know. 
I know what it is to be a human being. I know what it is to be humane towards other human beings. I don't know what people do, though. Because I don't know how people can have humanity. I mean, I'm sure it's possible. I don't know if that's a characteristic. Something that's out of my knowledge. I don't know how that goes because of, you know, that common sense factor. And with all of the clarifications and verifications as to whatever percentage that I've been proven accurate, there is, though, yes, I have given the forgiveness aspect of how I personally view it. However, how the standards that I've been held to, you know, in that troll trace aspect of the Austin, South Park, overall Texas or troll trace situation, I don't know what their standards have been that they would have programmed themselves or what their accuracy and verifications and clarifications would have to be. Because no matter what my opinion is, that's my opinion. That's not me putting it in stone. Huge difference. And so, you know, that'd be on them to take in consideration regarding quite a few factors. And so, you know, um, I did wait to go through that in my journal, Blog for Ornery PSA, on my website, www.susanelee.com, in reference to the fancy situation in 2008 and 2012, because I didn't want to overreact. I wanted to make sure that I was remaining calm despite the situations, especially after my Medal of Honor art project trips, I wanted to make sure, especially after what I had already dealt with in the time frame before 2013, I just wanted to make sure, personally, I kept myself in line, because that would be common sense before just spouting off and being over dramatic because people who wouldn't be capable to internally self-evaluate what would the maturity level be as far as that's concerned. So sure, it took me a few months before I actually went into it. I did what I could to remain calm because there was just so much that I was dealing and you know my hair I was working and I've been growing it back in after these situations up in Washington State mm -hmm. that was above the Mason Dixon line so I've been doing things to uh, to strengthen myself to make sure that I could handle certain factors because <laughs> well who has humanity that would actually be assisting me in the capacities that I'd actually need. I have been writing about that and there's my journal blog, The Ornery PSA, on my website, www.susanmealing.com. So while some people may have shown up to Club Sapphire up in Washington State and have wondered Maybe, why I didn't bring it up, as far as my website. Well, unlike some people, my profession is not in that particular reference. So bringing up that I have a website when volunteering at Club Sapphire, which is an adult social club, though swingers and whatnot, it's supposed to be a consensual adult lifestyle, Having etiquette and having respect for myself, but also respect for the club um, and the fact of being responsible with volunteering, I didn't feel or have the sensation to be disrespectful to Club Sapphire. Uh, I wanted to make sure that, yes, you could find my business card there. However, unless you spoke with about it on your own with etiquette and respect, 
actually was capable to put my business cards there. One of the owner's spouses and stuff, I had spoken with him in detail, honestly, about it, and he allowed me to put my business card there. And so I figured in reference to common sense, people would just speak with me in truth if they had any questions. Now, there is another male that I had met in the vicinity, and I don't, it's not that I don't count him in that same way. Because it's kind of a half and half on that one. Despite having gotten to speak with briefly, I didn't really consider the same way because I don't remember seeing a wristband on his wrist when I was speaking with him. So because I didn't see a wristband around his wrist, there is a different leniency in that reference for whatever that's worth. And so in comparison to what is known I paid attention to because of being volunteering in that time frame. So if the by chance of anybody who had, at some point in time, I had known in person, face to face in person from the areas that I had been in in whatever capacity where I knew people in person before winding up in Washington State, well, you know, that would be on them to have etiquette and respect, uh, not just for myself, but for the club that they were attending. And the people who own that club, as, as well as run that club, as well as for themselves. Because the people who own that club
just lectures about my own personal experiences. I don't really believe that's journalism, though it is possibly. I, I didn't ever really think in that capacity because I would consider journalism at that point in time. So within a 24 hour period, maybe within a week period or a seven day period in comparison, more along the lines because I'm a specific type of individual. So I don't deny that's my journal blog. So while yes, I understand that there is the plausibility of some people seeing my website, I don't know the number. It's more along the lines of I acknowledge I have my journal blog, the Ornery PSA. And it's on my website, www.susanmeeling.com. However, I don't assume certain things. So when I think of a journalist, I think of like Asbury Park Press or the New York Times or the Washington Post. That's what I think of when it comes to a journalist. When it comes to Fox News and CNN and MSNBC, whichever local stations and national stations and world stations, C-SPAN and ABC and so on and so forth, I don't actually know how that works. I know that in the reference such as The Five and um, Judge Janine and um, what's the other one? Morning Joe, uh, Anderson Cooper, Don Lemon, that they do commentary while going over different news portions. So I understand that they're commentators. Because I understand, or at minimum, I guesstimate, that they have people that bring them stories that they then discuss in their commentary. So if anything, I suppose maybe it's more commentative what I do than journalism. Because I would, in my opinion, you know, similar to Sean Hannity and Glenn, Glenn Beck, and um, Bill O'Reilly, that it's more of an immediate, within a 24, 48 hour, seven day period of a specific event in comparison to something that's contemplated. I didn't ever view my journal blog. Yes, I have written about such as the 2016 election, but again, if you look at my reference points, it has to do with my own personal experiences being a mom. It has to do with my own personal experiences from my life. So it's still in a journal blog or blogger sort of way, in my opinion, though I could see in certain other references such as the 2020 election, where in that aspect, it could be considered as journalism. It's not Infowars. I don't, wouldn't consider that along the same line as what those guys do. I just do my own journal blog. And so I didn't ever really consider that in the traditional journalist way. So when with more recent examples, such as the Joe Rogan experience. I don't know if that's considered journalism, or if that's considered commentary, or if that's considered a podcast, or if that's considered um, investigative news. I don't know what that would be. So 
say when I was in the state of Texas from 2000 to 2013. I don't know if people in the supposed to be adult consenting lifestyle know this, but when I would speak with people at my son and my daughter's school, I didn't call myself Lady Dory Bell when I walked in the door. I don't know who would, as far as, you know, um, the legal name when you go into a school and you have to present your identification card. Common sense. However, you know, I don't know who of those people knew that would be common sense. Or even going to a military installation. I didn't think that, I mean, I don't know. Am I supposed to go and get a new blue ID card at Fort Sam Houston or, well, local nearby? Am I supposed to be like, so my legal name is Susan and all that stuff, but, you know, how about you put Lady Dory Bell on there? I don't think that that's something that could be done. Although, you know, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> going through the legal paperwork of that, to be quite honest. However, I, you know, my DD-214 says my legal maiden name in comparison. So I go by Susan Mee Ling, which is my first legal name and my middle legal name. It's very simple for me. I find that easier for me. Although if they want to do a, like, a parenthesis, <laughs> I don't know, that's, I don't know how big they, I mean, you know, the font lettering, as far as that's concerned, I don't know. I don't know how they want to do that, because then there's the reverend aspect before. So, you know, that's a lot of stuff. <laughs> Besides, I have all of my scuba diving certifications. It's a lot of work. It's just simple. <laughs> it seems easier. <laughs> Just gonna let you simmer on that in this lecture. Mm -hmm. 
might make sense as to why I was extremely skittish at that wedding if you were to think about that now as far as what do you want sort of thing, why, why, like what, what do you do, what do you, why are you, because that was as it was. There were a few issues as far as that's concerned because that's both before and after my biological mother's sister, Edie, and her second husband, and it's like, this, you know, this is the Midwest stuff, you know, don't think it's just the South stuff, you know, I was perfectly fine growing up where I was born and raised, but, you know, fine, okay, fine, I don't know how to explain my grandmama because my cousin Jay is, you know, her biological father is African American, who his mom and dad are my grandmama and grandpapa, which are her grandmama and grandpapa, but her biological mother is my biological father's great, or my great aunt Helen on my biological father's side. That's so much easier to explain than that. Just pointing that out there, but then there's the abomination of a wedding that my biological sister had, and those particular references, and not just because of the clothing that they were wearing, it was the pure energy of whatever you want to call that. It was quite disgraceful, in my opinion. I actually became physically ill looking at it. Mm -hmm. It was a very disgusting situation. The energy coming from those people was just, I literally had to not throw up. It was very difficult. It was so difficult to not vomit at the wedding, but that would have been, that would have been bad form. <laughs> And again, depending on what that was, I don't know, it might have actually spruced things up in comparison, because, you know, my biological father and my biological mother's brother, which is my uncle Leonard, oh, um, he actually did throw up at that wedding, so that's kind of why I didn't understand why he didn't throw up at that one, as far as my biological sister. I don't know, maybe he didn't drink alcohol. It is what it is. Maybe he threw up later when he found out a few things, hypothetically. So, you know, in Austin, regarding South Park, and how irony of ironies, because I'm sure that refers to other characters in the South Park cartoon <laughs> pop culture series. Um, you know, there is this particular reference regarding, what was the episode? It was some stupid, st stupid something, it was like a camera or something, and then there's my biological sister, and have her cut. <laughs> it's like green lens or something, as far as that, I don't even know. That one, <laughs> I could see my biological sister and some of those females willingly participating in comparison. Um, so there would be that irony in comparison. You know, now that I think about it, I kind of, so here's an irony. I got so angry, my son had come back to the house and informed me that his high school was doing a review regarding pop culture in the current time. And at this point, I'm fairly certain that the 20 however many series of South Park. <laughs> I don't know. I am wondering at this point in time if that's kind of the equivalent because there's literally South Park Center, South Park Shopping, South Park Autumn all in Austin, Texas. And so, you know, maybe that's something to take in consideration, those different episodes. <laughs> Kind of similar what I did with the Blind Spot um, TV show regarding my official YouTube channel. That's why I was wearing the clothing I was because of the reference to the FBI female in 
that regard with the tattoos, but you know, you'd actually have to pay attention to my words that I was speaking regarding the lecture that I was giving in comparison to the superficial viewpoint. You actually have to get in depth and listen to the words that come out of my mouth regarding those official YouTube videos of mine. Make sure to like and subscribe, and if you're going to leave a comment, please do be respectful and have etiquette. And go to my website, www.susanyulink.com. But that would be common sense to pay attention to that. Uh, but, you know, to each their own, you know. It would depend if you pay attention to details or if you only pay attention to the superficial aspects. It depends. But in regards of E equals MC squared and the SpaceX situation, I'm going to guesstimate while he can pay attention to some superficial aspects. He probably, hypothetically, I don't want to assume, I don't know if I've ever met him, he probably did not introduce himself to me as E equals MC squared. That's kind of a, a more recent thing that I've come up with. He hasn't walked up and been like, I am E equals MC squared, although that would be pretty cool. <laughs> to me and say, hey, I'm E equals MC squared from SpaceX or whatever or anything like that, <laughs> I probably would remember that one. You know, kind of similarly as when scuba diving in whatever capacity, if I had been asked what my title was, I might remember that. Um, <laughs> that might stand out, you know? I know the distinctive difference between my different but that is as it is. Anyway, so in regards of the pop culture aspect of the South Park episode with E equals MC square Elon Musk, he has to find someone that something another to help him with something another. And so he's probably not superficial. I would guesstimate because some of the interviews that I've seen him in and what he's said, I've actually listened, and so most likely, while he could be superficial in some capacity, because I'm sure there are plenty of people who are, uh, I'm sure at the exact same time, he might think, I don't want to assume. <laughs> However, you know, because I can't use the reference that he went to college, you know, <laughs> You know, for all those references regarding the people in Austin, and in 2010 and 2011, I don't want to be disrespectful to E equals MC square. <laughs> so while sure, okay, you know, he did go to college, I, I don't want to lump him in with that, you know? <laughs> like to group himself with the Austinites who, you know, think that they are the most intelligent in the universe while they were going to college. Some of them having gotten degrees. Uh, probably a massively huge difference to my consideration is he owns Tesla and SpaceX. <laughs> and he's been working on that for a couple of years in comparison. So hypothetically, uh, so I just, I don't want to assume, okay? <laughs> I, 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 I would hope that that would not be offensive to E equals MC squared. <laughs> However, you know, if he would prefer to lump himself in with that, he is more than welcome to say so himself. I'm sure he can speak for himself. Um, I'm going to guesstimate, though, he probably doesn't want to. <laughs> and since I don't know when he moved to the Austin area, <laughs> irony of irony, I don't know if he noticed the South Park part. 
just be an, an <clears throat> anyway, um, it would be, it would be irony if he had not seen that and then <laughs>
the modern day book that I, you know, <laughs> warn people. And so if there's an issue, um, well, <laughs> I've already explained that in finding a silver lining. You can go to the book section on my website, www.susan. So that way I wasn't disrespectful um, as to what my ex-in-laws did. So in regards of my Medal of Honor Art Project trips, <clears throat> well, maybe there's some people in the Fort Worth area that, uh, or do So there is that irony in reference to the modern day book and my updates in my journal box on YouTube and and so um you know um if there are people who have an issue well the issue That would be what I warned the Holy Roman Catholic Church at St. Patrick's Cathedral. That would be my ex-mother-in-law and my ex-sister-in-law and my other ex-sister-in-law, my ex-brother again, not myself. They just warned you. But you know those days. People who get all superstitious and they don't pay attention to the correct details. Wouldn't that be an irony in regards of an ex As usual, I'm on a guest and they attention to details. The correct details are in. So, in regards to the South Park in Austin, <laughs> and the Jewel Trade, irony, irony, so irony, yeah, I bet there are some people who are happy that I took care of certain stuff the way I did after my transfer now, and the American, but you know, that would have to translate to people, you know, being human beings instead. And common sense. Yeah. That's what it is. So anyway. <laughs> so then, um, yeah, that particular episode, for example, I'm going on St. Patrick's Day maybe, but in regards to Pontius Pilate's present of men. So then there's the Or members only, correct? Is that what it's, I think that's what it's called? So that would be irony. That would be so irony if E equals MC square found out the truth that I had landed at the bottom of the ocean and he was like, okay, well, I'm going, I'm going to catch you. <laughs> Could it do a South Park episode and it catch him? <laughs> You're the dog. Catch her. And so <laughs> you have to have a dry from the humor for that one, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, or twist it or whatever. Anyway, so then there's then there's that. That would be irony. That would be because I, you know, created the underwater travel system and I came 
up with a few ideas for a few other things. And then there's a few situations that I have personally dealt with. And uh, it just is as it is. Although I do have a picture from an event in DFW in 2012. Funny enough, the background is bright yellow. And I'm wearing a green dress. And I had listened to a Joe Rogan podcast with some guy who, or a male who had been out to the space station as well as um, I think Neil, Dr. Neil deGrasse had talked about this as well regarding certain physical features when there's space travel on a human being's body. I'm, I'm not certain if I understood. I know that there is another situation regarding a later photo shoot. We're still in, you know, it's in 2012, but it's a few weeks or a few months after that. So, you know, but it was just, it was as it was regarding Irving 2011 and the few times and if that is accurate, because what would NASA guys know about that? I mean, and then astrophysicist. What would an astrophysicist know about that? <laughs> Possibly. 
might be reaching for straws here, <laughs> pun intended, although I could say I'm reaching for strings, but I have to do this. <laughs> scientific history somewhere that could be studied and not referenced, who knows? I don't want to assume. You know, I went to college when I was in high school, so I don't know how much it changed. <laughs> YouTube videos regarding 